Welcome back. <laughs> Kelly Hansen is my guest co-host today. All right, look there. Cabin oh, living, the life. right kind of living. If you don't own a cabin, though, now could be the time to buy. But it's not all about the summer fun. You have to think about a lot of things, including what happens during the winter. Here with questions you should be asking yourself if you're in the market for a cabin is Julie and Daniel with DeRoche Realty Group and Cobalt yeah. Banker Burnett. What's up, guys? Welcome to the show. All right, now listen. Uh, I don't own a cabin. Do you own a cabin? No. All right, but so right now we're, we're the kind of people who have friends with cabins, but we someday it would guy. be so fun to own a cabin. Somebody might be out there on the ledge right now thinking, is now the time to do it? So let's walk through some logistical things. Julie, we'll start with you. One thing you say to consider before you put money down on a cabin, drive time. This is key. Probably one of the most important things. You know, you're going to be driving there often. Yeah, Everything's in, my ducks are in a line always. Oh my god! Do you want so two hours, like, three hours? Some like people have a so limit where it's going to be too long like to get up there easily on the weekend. So you have to consider what time of the week are you going? Are you going during the week? Are you going during the weekend when everybody else is going up to their cabins? So a hour and a half drive normally may take three hours on the weekend if you're fighting traffic. So okay, that, yeah. that, that doesn't sound so great. No, that doesn't. My goodness, if you're dreading the commute on the way up and the way back, that might be an investment that you end up regretting. Right. You know. Right. Uh, Daniel, after you figure out the drive time, you figure out this is the spot where I want it. We really need to go next level on the characteristics of the property. What should somebody be really taking into consideration? Well, kind of like that picture we just showed. Uh, to me, you really want to think about do you want the high view where you're overlooking the lake, but you're not right down on the water, but then you typically have a lot of stairs going down to it, which carrying your beverages, we'll say, up and down and stuff like that can be a pain. Or do you want to just walk right out to the beach, but you know, be right at ground level with everything. So that's something to think about. Whose cabin was that? Because I would like to meet them. <laughs> that is that amazing. Was a, that was actually close in town. That was more of a lake home yes. than a cabin, that one. Yeah. Oh, that was beautiful. And then you also got to, just like I guess you would with any home, really be thinking about uh, bedrooms and bathrooms, but maybe in a different way because I would imagine once, if you become the person with the cabin, people will want mm -hmm. to visit you. So maybe yeah. more attention to guest rooms? Mm -hmm. Well, instead of having like one bed in a room, a lot of the cabins tend to have like four bunks in one room for children and four bunks or you know two double beds even side by side for parents and their kids. Okay. So a lot more sleeping spots than actual bedrooms and a lot more open space for entertaining and cooking and stuff like that than sleeping. Okay. When you're buying a cabin, it's different than buying a home, right, Julie? Yeah, and a lot of people don't realize that if they bought their house and they put 5 or 10% down uh, for their down payment, then they go to buy a cabin, you usually need closer to 20% down. So you need a little bit more cash if you are financing what's, it. What's the deal there? Because I, a lot of people think if I don't have my 20%, that's fine. I get PMI, personal mortgage insurance, pay a little more, and all is well. But with a cabin, why do you need to have closer to that 20? I just think because it's your second mortgage, you already have one mortgage. The bank looks at you as more of a risk because sure. you already have one mortgage. So if you're going to take out that second mortgage, they want. When I, think about more a, skin in the game. when I think about having a cabin, I think about who's going to take care of it when I'm not there. That's a big question you should be asking yourself, right? Yeah, you don't want to, like, like Julie said, you don't want to spend three hours in traffic Friday night, get there, it's already dark, you wake up Saturday morning and spend four hours mowing your lawn and picking weeds, then you enjoy it for the afternoon and you spend four hours driving back home. Doesn't sound like any fun. So typically we'll try to find um, a you know, someone in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice one. What? Our jaws Whoa. are dropping. The cabins I've been to have a, like, don't flush the toilet at all times sort of a <laughs> mandate. This seems like next level living. That's yeah. gorgeous. That's those lake homes again. Okay, so m maybe you have one of these beautiful lake homes, but you really do. you got to think about all that stuff. Are you cutting the grass? Are you up there enough? Because I would imagine maybe there aren't homeowners associations quite as much, but there's still an expectation that you keep your property mm -hmm. up, even if you only visit once a month. Yep, absolutely. And you want it to look nice when you get there. You don't want it to be full of webs and overgrown so a lot of times there are people in the community that live there year-round that you can hire to do maintenance or there are maintenance companies so plan that into your budget because a lot of people don't think about that and then they you know that'll cost you a couple hundred bucks a month and then in the winter people don't think about this at all if you don't plow your driveway and there's maybe not so good people sometimes around they see an unplowed driveway they know nobody's there sure. and that's when break-ins happen so right. you even have to think about plowing your driveway in the winter making it look like someone's there so criminals don't just stop in right uh, you get all that figured out you kind of think you may have honed in on what you want to do now you've got a you got the cabin figured out talk about the lake what's important what kind of questions should someone be asking themselves about the lake that they want to live on or near 
Oh. Fishing? Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Julie. Oh, sorry. oh he went fishing immediately. <laughs> fishing, that's, that's what I want. What do you say, Julie? Yeah, is it recreation? Do you want fishing? Do you want to be able to boat to restaurants? Is that your kind of thing? Do you want to be on chain of lakes? There's a lot of lakes that are on chains where you can boat around to different lakes. Do you want to be on a smaller lake? Uh, thinking about lake traffic. Is there a lot of public access on that lake where you're going to have even more boats than what actually lives on the lake coming on the lake on weekends? So all things to kind of consider pollution levels, right. clear, clarity of the lake. A lot of people don't really put their time into researching the lake before they And that's where your real money is, is the water you're buying. Mm -hmm. right. Like we personally, if we were on a lake, I want to be able to have two or three restaurants that we can boat to, but I also do want to have good fish. Mm -hmm. Jeez, well, <laughs> give the man what he wants, okay? <laughs> he told you what he wants. Uh, all right, so that's all fun stuff with Cabin Talk. We want to talk with you guys about a, a rebuild that you've been doing in Edina. Give us an update. This started back in January. Where are we oh. now? Well, we're hopefully uh, getting close to done. We're Away supposed to move that. in a week ago. Yeah, we, we were supposed to move in a week ago, but that's so, not happening. So what happened there? It's just everything. It's you know, you always have setbacks. You know, we have a setback on tile. There's just some setback on some different things that kind of push everything back. But right now they're painting, so they just enameled all the cabinets and all the trim, and they'll be going just on to. Beautiful. Sometimes your lovely wife orders tile from somewhere that's not <laughs> close, and it sits in a shipping yard for a month. Hypothetically, oh, hypothetically, this isn't a real situation. Don't worry, they're doing okay. Uh, thank you guys. It's always going to be with you. Can't thank wait you. to see the finished thank you product so much. there. Uh, we've got a link, by the way, to DeRoche Realty Group with Coldwell Banker Burnett. It's up on our website, TwinCitiesLive.com. They'd also be happy to talk with you if you're interested in buying, selling, or even building a home of your own. Thanks to DeRoche Realty Group for sponsoring Twin Cities Live.